Oh man, it's time for slow cooking with scarf. All right, here's what I have so far. First off, I put some water in just so it can evaporate off as it cooks. Not a whole lot, but you don't want things to kind of dry out and get a weird texture on it and all that. All right, I'm going to run this on high for six hours on this one. Again, be sure your settings are what you want and are safe. You need to, oh, oh, we got the birdie though. We got the birdie. That's not, e it's, it's a few hours off. That's an American Robin right there. It's saying it's a chickadee, but I have it. It's three hours off. So, I mean, that was definitely an American Robin there. Um, okay, <laughs> back to the food here. Uh, yeah, normally I would get groceries late and then just run it on low and let it run overnight. And this one turns it automatically too warm afterwards, but I don't guarantee that that's gonna happen with yours and all that. But anyway, slow cooking has saved me a bunch of money. Next thing I'm gonna do is add the sauce. And I just got three of these. I got the store brand here. And they're usually pretty delicious. I don't have any complaints about that, but they're cheaper and they taste pretty good. I mean, this is gonna be super easy. That's one of the points of why I'm making this video is it takes very little time to do. So I have three of these. I'm going to pour these in now. All right, cool. Another word of caution is to make sure that your ingredients that go into the slow cooker are not going to cause you an allergic reaction. This one right here has some roasted peanuts in it. So if you have peanut allergies, you do not want to use this. Just make sure, and I guess it goes without saying, this is obvious stuff, but I want you to be safe as well as eat tasty. So yeah, you can accomplish both here, hopefully. But anyway, okay, let's go back to the next thing I'm going to add. I'm just gonna spice it up a tiny bit with some garlic powder and some minced onion. Uh, I could have gotten frozen onions, I guess. Sometimes I do that, but it would have filled this up a little bit too much. If this were a seven quart recipe, maybe I would have gotten the frozen onions instead. But uh, these work fine. This is gonna spice up the broth a little bit. So, all right, I'm here. I'm gonna dump those in, yeah. All right, all right, now we're talking. All right, now I'm going to put in the uh, major ingredients. This looks good already. It smells good already too. This is stew cubed-ish chicken. Nice part is at this grocery store, depending on the, um, the person at the deli, sometimes they will cut these into stew meat pieces instead of just having those like big old chicken breasts. So, all right. Okay, I'm just gonna mix this in now. This is two and a quarter pounds. I'm trying to kind of eyeball it, or I guess I virtually eyeballed it when I was like, hey, I want two and a quarter pounds of chicken breast. So yeah, this is the main thing that needs to cook. You don't want rare chicken. <laughs> like you don't, you, you don't want to chew in a chicken and then have your teeth slide through it. Also, if you are vegetarian or vegan and all that, you can sub these out for sure. Uh, I mean, tofu can work nicely in a, a recipe like this. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, next ingredient, yeah! I usually pick a few vegetables to go in each mix, so I have crinkle cut carrots and sliced yellow squash. I got a few more, so hold the phone, but these are gonna go in here. And they'll look delicious! Oh yeah! Getting those vegetables in dough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, I got a little bit more here. You don't want to fill this all the way to the top as well because there will be some, you know, bubble in up at the top when it gets at its hottest as well. So you don't want to have it right at the top, otherwise you might have some spillover and all that. I don't want that here because it's just like <laughs> counter and floor. <laughs> All right, uh, what are those? All right, I got those bamboo shoots. I got a little lazy. I went with the one with the, uh, the pull top. So <laughs> I don't want to use a can opener down here. I need to buy another one so I have one down here. I got a really nice one for my parents, but I don't have one nice down here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put this in. This is mostly just for texture. This is very nutrient minimal, but I don't know. It adds a little bit of crunch to it. Adds a little bit of interesting texture. So either that or baby corn would be a good choice here. And if you want to get a little exotic, you get that pickled baby corn. Oh my goodness. If you want a little pickled taste, but I didn't want that this time. All right. So I'm going with the bamboo shoots. Put these in. Here we go. It looks like cheese, but it's not. <laughs> All right. So these are the bamboo shoots. And also just to be clear, this is just an example of a simple thing you can do in a very small amount of time to produce a lot of food for the week. If you can store it, you need the space to store it in the refrigerator, whether you put these in individual containers or whether you just put the entire slow cooker in. I guess one extra thing I should say is I was a dumb dumb and forgot to replenish 
the slow cooker liners. You can get a BPA-free liner for your slow cooker, so cleanup is a joke after you're done. Uh, but now I mean, I'm gonna have to clean this, and it's gonna stink. I hopefully not like stink in a bad way. It's just gonna. <laughs> it just takes a long time to clean if I just cook like this. Anyway, all right, cool. Next ingredient. What is what's gonna be next? Next one's controversial. Oh no, not the mushrooms. I think mushrooms are delicious. These are just basic white mushrooms that are really cheap. And I got a 16 ounce container. The 16 ounce container, I mean, basically it was a lot cheaper per ounce <laughs> to get the 16 ounce versus the four or the eight. So I was just like, all right, I'll just go for 16. Uh, it's gonna be, that's, a, that's actually a good amount of mushrooms for this, I think, but I know a lot of people don't like mushrooms. So that's why I say it's a controversial ingredient. But anyway, I'm gonna dump these in. Uh, I guess you can cry now if you don't like mushrooms. Like you ruined it, you ruined it. But I think it, I think it makes it delicious. So I'm eating this. So, <laughs> so the finishing touches on this. I'm gonna put in a little bit of Himalayan pink salt and oregano. Some other options if you want to throw in butter, you can put in basil. Those go well together. If you like the taste of cilantro on its own, that's usually really good too. But interestingly, some people taste cilantro as a soapy type of taste. I don't know what causes that. So if you taste it like soap, you probably don't want to throw it in. Uh, you don't want to put anything paper related near the base where it's like really really hot You also don't want to touch the base because it's really really hot. You don't want to burn yourself uh, So I have the Tupperware cap right here I probably should just turn around and use the stove area, but this this was like a unused floor for a very long time and Sometimes bugs fall down from that, you know, the uh, the fan area. So I don't want bugs in my food I, I know some of y'all beg to differ and you're like, mmm, bugs, but I know my bird audience would be annoyed with that, so I'm sorry, all my avian viewers. Uh, but anyway, I'll throw these in. Uh, if you have, uh, if you want to make it creamier, you can throw in some coconut milk. That would actually be really delicious, but I don't want the extra calories from that. So a lot of this is, what do you think would go well together? What can be quick to throw into a slow cooker? And then, you know, I'm gonna come back in like three hours and just stir it a little bit. It's on high. I'm gonna probably expect to eat in about four and a half hours, maybe five. So I'm good on time right now. And yeah, looks really good. It smells really good, but make something tasty, save a lot of money. So the entire cost of this five quart concoction is just about 30 bucks and I'm including the spices in that. It was actually 28.33 plus tax and then there's a little bit of garlic powder I'm adding in and minced onion, uh, oregano, salt, all that. That's not gonna add a whole lot to the total. So $30 is I think a fair estimate, but you can save a little bit more if you get a special on chicken per pound. I got it for $2.99 a pound. This could be $1.99 a pound on the special or you could get a value pack Let's say you go to Walmart, sometimes they'll have a $1.99 like super pack, but you do have to freeze that extra chicken, otherwise it's just gonna go bad. So you can spread you can spread that over a few weeks, you just have to have the storage space for that. Uh, but if you can get that special, that brings it down another two dollars and a quarter. Uh, if you uh, find a special on sauces or like there's a there's a two for two for five bucks or something like that instead of whatever like yeah, whatever, whatever it is, you can save a little bit of money there too. So sometimes, yeah, you can save money by doing that. Uh, if you have any coupons, you could save money by doing that. If you get cash back or whatever, yeah, that same thing. So um, making this video also, one, I like to cook stuff and it's pretty fun. And I like to make tasty stuff that also doesn't take a lot of time. So this is kind of sloppy culinary stuff going on but it's fun and uh, i make some tasty stuff that lasts this will last at least 12 meals so that's going to save a lot of money for example if you go to chick-fil-a and you buy a chick-fil-a sandwich it's going to be like five bucks and if you add anything else like if you add bacon if you add pepper jack or anything like that that's gonna add some money yes you can add bacon at chick-fil-a now if the locations have it uh and yeah that that adds a lot of cost to it and if you have waffle fries with it if you have a drink with it or a shake or anything like that it's gonna increase that dramatically so let's say an average of nine dollars a meal if you go to chick-fil-a all right maybe that's the high end of uh, what, what you would consider fast food unless you consider five guys which is like forty dollars per breath that you take in there um, <laughs> no but if you if you're spending five uh, if you're spending nine dollars per meal at Chick-fil-A and let's say you go for lunch and dinner so that's not including breakfast this this is not a breakfast food that I'm cooking either this is just gonna be lunch and dinner and maybe some like midnight snacks or something like that um, 
yeah, you're going to you're going to be spending $18 a day and for 6 days that's $108. So, here you're spending about 30 for tasty nutritious food that's going to cover all the bases and instead of paying 108 for uh meals or if you even go for like Wendy's for a 4 for 4 uh yeah, you cut that in half, you're going to spend 54, but I would question the nutrition on it maybe. Uh but anyway, yeah, this is making the best of what you have around because if you compare one burger from Chick-fil-A or, or one burger, <laughs> one sandwich, I don't know, I, I one sandwich from Chick-fil-A, <laughs> Chick-fil-A burger. <laughs> this is halfway done. I got another about two, two and a half hours to go on the cooking. So I'm gonna stir it up just a little bit here. Looking pretty good. Hey, yeah. It's about just the right proportion in terms of the ingredients. Maybe a little heavy on the mushrooms still. <laughs> so uh, I just don't want to store the mushrooms, you know, so. Uh. I went with the cost per ounce on the mushrooms, so that's what happens, I guess. One of the biggest things that helped me when I didn't have much of any sort of money was cooking meals in bulk. And uh, I actually had a friend who gifted me a slow cooker, and it was like a $20 four quart slow cooker. And actually, it's right. This one right here, but um, it comes with the actual four quart cooker here. This is a five. And I have this because it's a little more programmatic and it auto shuts off and all that. This one is more, uh, it, it's more manual. You have to turn it off, otherwise it's gonna stay on high, as long as you have it on high or low or whatever. So, yeah, you just gotta be more vigilant using that one, I suppose. But anyway, uh, yeah, a good slow cooker will cost about 20 bucks. So that's a startup cost for this. And if this can help anyone, then cool. Uh, I'm going to be giving a few more money tips and all that. Maybe I'll play Five Nights at Freddy's and like give some money tips or something like that. But I don't know. And not financial advice. I'm trying to save y'all money. I'm not trying to like shill stocks or like peddle anything here. I'm just trying to make sure that y'all are good and all that. Because I know everything is kind of crazy right now. So this covers really nice nutrition. This covers basically a week of meals. And yeah, it's been fun. It's It's fun to mess around with the ingredients too to see what goes together and you know you try out different sauces and you can make your own if you want or you just buy like i just like to buy the stuff from the store <laughs> you know like the store made pre-made sauces and all that and i was actually going to get korma unfortunately there was no korma this time but that's okay because this stuff looks delicious so i'm looking forward to trying this in a few hours when it finishes cooking so whether we're in a downturn or a correction or a full-blown recession or even worse I guess time will tell, right? But we do have the textbook Econ 101 definition of a recession going on where we have two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. So GDP is shrinking. Um, yeah, uh, we also have the inverted two year, 10 year yield curve. We also have wage uh, increase not even coming close to the inflation rate, even the adjusted CPI, uh, even the core rate is much higher than the wage increase. So people are really feeling the crunch. We have surges in prices, of course, with inflation. We also have uh, I mean, the nasty bear market that we just had the last few months uh, with the markets. And thankfully, we're coming out of that a little bit. I think that's a midterm effect going on. But anyway, I hope we don't go back into that bear market territory afterwards. Or in winter, we still have some supply chain issues all over the place. So anyway, it's a wacky time economically. And I'm hoping that y'all can save some money. One big thing with saving money is you can't spend as much money, so I'm hoping this goes to that effect. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's really about it. I'll, I'll give another clip once this is done and I'll, I'll be tasting, taste testing this. Yes. Yes. Cool. <laughs> All right, so here's the end result. I'm going to let it cool off a little bit. Here's the entire thing. Yes. Pretty good. All right, taste test time. All right. So it needs two things. One, I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. That's because I really like salt, okay. Two, this one right here. Hell, you could take a. Oh, this stuff's delicious. You could take a red. Be perfect in this. I'm gonna dump some in here. 
Here's a basic habanero sauce. Okay. Let's see if that's the ticket here. Still a little hot. Thermally. Yeah, that's good. Cool. All right. So I'm going to let that cool down and then I'm going to put that away for the week. We might should do it for this episode of Slow Cooking with Stir. <laughs> Wish I had like ice breath. That's a really good dish. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. All right. So that will do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll bring you some more recipes later on if you have a slow cooker recipe that you want to share that you you know you're not going to you know ruin any family secrets or anything like that like don't post your grandma's secret recipe if you are using that or whatever but anyway that's pretty good i like it i like it yeah all right thanks uh, but if you have any slow cooker recipes you can put in the comments or or whatnot but i got another few i want to share with you all so i don't know We'll see how this episode does. I'm sure it's going to pull in like 800 views. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Peace. God bless. Have a great day.